Um, hi, Fatima. Hi, Ken. Uh, hi, everyone else that's out there that we can't see. Uh, we suppress your videos and your chat for this session uh, just to make it a little bit easier for the recording that we're going to uh, share out afterwards. Uh, so I'm Jason Lapp. I'm the president here at Beautiful AI. Uh, we've been doing a, these sessions as webinars um, for current customers. Uh, and really the focus today is what's new uh, in the product. Uh, so we'll be doing a little bit of a feature review on things that were released in the latest uh, version uh, over the last couple of months. Uh, the last one we did before this was at the beginning of the year uh, where we had also focused on a few things. Um, so today uh, we'll be doing a demo. Uh, you'll get to see firsthand how we use the product. Uh, but you'll also get to experience some of the cool things that, that we just introduced. Um, we're excited about these, um, but what will the, the format for today is uh, Fatima and Ken, who both joined us from our customer success team and who are superstars with the product, um, they will be sharing the features. Uh, if you are have questions or you want to give feedback, please put it in the chat. We really want to hear from you. Uh, and at the end of the session, we'll take some time answer some of the questions you had raised in the survey we asked, uh, as well as um, answer some live Q&A. Um, our mission here is really to continue to build this product, to build great products in general. Um, feedback is a critical element of that. Um, and the things that we're actually showing you today are a result of that. Uh, over the last couple of months, we've been building them and we're excited to hear what you think. Uh, the two areas that we're going to focus on are design flexibility and leveraging existing content. So um, when it comes to flexibility, uh, we know design choices and individual preferences come into play when you're creating slides and creating presentations throughout the process. And we keep hearing that there are times when you want to break the rules and need more options. Um, as users of Beautiful AI, you know that we've put the design thinking into the product so it has boundaries and guardrails that keep the orientation of the slide um, within those confines. Um, we've now added the ability to unlock the design AI in a smart slide um, at times when you want to put a final touch or there's some personalization that the slide originally wouldn't have allowed. Um, so Fatima is going to spend some time on um, I, I think we're calling it um, converting to classic as part of this session. Um, so she'll spend some time showing you how to do that. The second thing that we're focused on in this release is leveraging existing content. So we also recognize that sometimes you want to start with something that you already created, or you might have pre-existing content um, that might be in another format, or for that matter, you might have company content uh, that that's generated from people who weren't using the beautiful platform. Um, so rather than recreating the wheel or recreating the content, we've created the ability for you to bring that content into beautiful uh, and start to use it in our platform. And Fatima is gonna show you this through, uh, Fatima or Ken, I'm not sure which one is gonna do that part, is gonna show you uh, how to do this through the import from PowerPoint feature. Um, of course, we want to focus on what's currently in the product uh, and some of the new features today, but it, this wouldn't be a what's new session if I didn't give you a quick preview on the, the things that are going to be in the next one and what's coming up. Um, we do releases every couple of weeks, every couple of months uh, on things that we're building from our product team. The three things that are probably you'll see in the next few weeks, um, we're focused on the concept of discoverability. So full text search to find content and slides that you've already created in the platform. So you could imagine in today's platform, um, you can search, but it, you search by content headlines and titles that you created. This will allow you to actually find um, you know, text within the slide. So it'll make it surfacing content really easy uh, for things that you're working on. Uh, the next thing is we're always building new smart templates and working on the smart uh, smart slides themselves. Uh, we've recently finished up a deep dive on our charts, uh, and this will be some cool features in there that uh, we're, we're anxious to see uh, how you use them. Uh, and then finally, for those of you that use our team product at your company, 
Uh, we're focused on sort of two areas that we think are going to enhance the ability to collaborate and um, manage your content. The first is uh, creating uh, team presentation libraries. Uh, and the second will be focused on uh, some new shared drive directories and organization tools that will be built into the product. Um, so that's all I had as the upfront. Uh, Fatima, you, uh, you good to go? I am now that I'm on right. mute. <laughs> all right, so let's get started. Uh, thank you again for everyone joining in. Um, a couple of logistics before we get started. This is recorded, so if you have to jump off for any reason, it's not a problem. We'll be emailing you a copy of the webinar along with the Q&A portion. Speaking of Q&A, feel free to drop any questions you may have at the bottom. Uh, there should be like a question and answer button in the Zoom window, so you can just click that, type in your questions. Uh, and if we don't get to your question during the session, we'll make sure to email you directly after. This session will be going over our new features regardless of your plan status. So if you are a basic pro or a team user, you will have access to all of these features. And so with that, let me get this started. There we go. As an outline of today's event, We'll start off with a bit of a refresher on using Beautiful AI, and I'll walk you through the classic slash converting to classic portion, uh, and as long with the import PowerPoint feature. And then Ken will then lead us through some of the feature updates uh, and UI changes, and then we'll have our Q&A. So as a quick overview, let me see. We're going to go back to our library. When you first log into Beautiful AI, you are dropped into what we call the library view. So it'll have all of the presentations that you've created or that have been shared with you. You have a couple of filters here on the left-hand side. If I'm currently in my team account, so you're gonna see if you're in a pro or a basic user, we have some team folders here. I also have some personal folders. If I wanna change up this view, I can go ahead and click on grid and then make it a list view. A list view is just going to give you a little bit more information on your slide. So you're going to see like macro level information. So you're going to see your title, uh, when it was created, when it was last updated, the slide and who the owner is. Uh, if you wanted to figure out whether you own it or not in grid view, you can just click on this grid and this little icon is just showing that someone else shared that with you. To create a new pre presentation, you're just going to click on create new presentation. If you've already loaded your theme, you can just select from one of your theme. If you're a new user or you've never saved your theme, you can start from one of our pre-built templates here, uh, pre-built themes. We also offer the ability to start from a template and these templates are complete presentation. So if you're in HR and you wanna create a benefits template or an employee handbook, you can go ahead and click on one of these and then start like customize it to be to fit your brand. For today's webinar, I'm actually just going to start from this presentation. And once you've opened your presentation or you've created new your presentation, you're going to land in what we call the editor view. Here on the left hand side, these are your slide level controls. So the colors, if you want to change the different colors of your slide layout, if you want to add or remove the size of the photo, you also have the ability to add elements and animations. At the top, this is where you're gonna control your slide. So your title, uh, if you wanna view the organized view, you can see all of the slides that are in this view. Here on the right-hand side, these are all of your collaboration controls. So the comments and collaboration. So like if I wanted to invite a user, I would just click on this button here. And then we're gonna add Ken's name. And I've now invited Ken as a collaborator. Oh, looks like I did it already. So he is a collaborator on this presentation. And to get started, let's see. So we're gonna click on add slide to add a slide to your presentation. And it's gonna drop you into what we call the templates library. Here at the top, you'll notice this is new for this release. We now allow you to start from a classic slide or you can start from one of our smart templates. Our smart templates are all noted by this little sparkle icon next to the name of the template. So if let's say I wanted to add a bullet template, 
I could either start from a blank bullet template or I can start from an inspiration gallery slide. These slides are completed slides. So if you look at this and you're like, I really like the feel of that. I like the design of it. I want my slide to look like that. You can start from one of these slides um, and then update the content. One question that we got during the registration was, how do I copy slides? I can't believe I can't copy slides. You actually can copy slides between presentations. So all you'd have to do is click on copy slides from this left-hand menu. And I'm gonna click, click on the presentation that has that slide. And you'll click on it and then click copy selected slide into presentation. And then it automatically adds that, present, that slide to your presentation. So for this, I've added the cycle slide, and I think I want to also add a header to this slide. It'll, there we go. So once I've added this header, this made uh, the cycle a bit small. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and adjust the text size really quick. There we go. What's really awesome about Beautiful AI is that it would automatically adapt to as I add and remove content, my slide will adapt. So if I go ahead and click on variations, um, there we go. And I wanna change this to a looping process or a straight line process, it'll automatically change to fit that variation. Also, if I wanna stretch this out, it'll stretch out automatically for me. I could remove content. So let's say I remove this one and this here, as I add or remove content to the slide, the slide automatically adapts. So we'll go ahead and I'll add those back just by clicking Control Z on my keyboard, which is the undo button. And I think this slide probably needs an image. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on layout and an image. This will take me to my image library. All of our images are all royalty free and high res images. So you can select from any one of the categories or you can search. If you've added images in the past, you can just select from your recent images. We also allow you to select from either Dropbox or images from slides that have already existed. So I'm just gonna click this cool looking robot. And now that I have this robot, the slide still looks a little dull. So I'm gonna go ahead and change some of these colors clicking on colors and I'm selecting this multicolor option. And I think that matches the robot well. I'm also gonna move this, the image to the right hand or to the left hand side. And maybe I will make it a tad bit smaller. Perfect. I think that's a good looking slide so far. And as we mentioned before, really the power of beautiful AI lies with our smart sides. So our smart slides will prevent you from making any design mistakes like using the incorrect font size or color or adding too much text. Or even in this case, if I was to add another item, it may cap me out. And while this is all great, we know that we can't factor in every single design choice. So we built a new feature that will give you the extra bit of flexibility that you need for when you hit the guardrails that Jason was mentioning earlier of our smart slides. So let's say I want to move this. I already think it looks really great being in the center, but I think I want to move maybe this to the left a little. So this is where converting to classic slide comes in. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this more button here and click on convert to classic slide. This is now converted this slide. So each of these items are now individual classic elements. So now I was able to select this entire hub. And now I could move it to the right hand side. This is not something that we were able to do before. And now I freed up some space and I'm thinking maybe I should probably also add an image to this. So I'm gonna go ahead. I could either click from import. I've already created this really cool side and I'm gonna move it here on the right-hand side. Let's make that a little bigger. I also might wanna make my hub and spoke smaller. So if I click on this, highlight all and move, there we go. 
And now I could add this image to the left. With classic slides, you now have more options with text. So you could even add a code for our, an, an equation for our mathematicians and our software engineers. In this case, I'm just gonna click on body and let's move this here. And we'll type in created in less than three minutes. I'll have the option with classic slides to text align individual text boxes. This is not an option in our smart templates. And if I wanted to, I could also add some border colors or a fill color. Perfect. So I think I'm done with this slide. And now I have some other slides, maybe some legacy slides that we've created. So now I want to move on to importing PowerPoint. So the same way, you're going to click on add slide here. And then you're going to click import from PowerPoint. It'll take you to the select PowerPoint presentation window. So you'll click select file and you'll select your import. So as this is generating, you don't want to close this page um, or refresh because then you'll have to do it again. And it's a small deck, so it should only take another second or so. So we'll go ahead. It looks like our slides have come in. So you could either select all of the slides or let's say there's just one really good slide that you want from this PowerPoint. You've already recreated your slides in beautiful. Uh, so you can select a couple or you can select all. So I'm gonna go ahead and select these four and I'll click on, or I'll just click select all five and then click on import slides. It'll then take you to the map fonts from presentation. So the original PowerPoint that I was importing came in with these three fonts, Calibri, Atmospheric, and Montserrat. Uh, I don't have those fonts, these are the first two preloaded, so I could either map it to the theme font or I could select from my list or upload the font directly from this view. I'm not going to do anything at this time and just allow it to map to the theme font. So we're going to click on import sides. and then it begins to import. And now my slides have been automatically added to my deck. And they come in using the power of a beautiful AI classic. So you'll be able to click on your text now with the classic elements. And let's say you wanna change the font size. Uh, you can directly change the font here we now offer the ability to strike through text, underline. We also have super and subscript abilities. If you wanted to edit the line spacing of your text or the line height, you can do that here as well. You could also move this and make it smaller. Let's say you want to do this. And let's say with this slide, I'm thinking this logo feels out of place, or maybe the coloring here at the bottom is a bit out of place. So you can change the color, that looks better. And then maybe you want to, if you're talking about your cryptocurrency and you wanna have a chart on all of the times you bought the dip and sold at the high, you could then create a really nice looking uh, table here. You also have the option with these individuals elements that come in, let's say it came in orange. You can change it to blue. Uh, again, you can move your content. Let's just delete that. You can bulk move items. Let's say we're going to move this. Whoops. Move it up a bit. Maybe you want to add a chart. And these tablet, uh, the table and the chart elements that I'm adding to this slide are all using our smart technology. So even though you now have the ability to add it here, you still have the same functionalities that you would in the smart templates for line charts. So you'd click on edit chart, you'd edit it the same way, you'd import your data the same way. Or let's say you've done all this, you've imported your PowerPoint and you still feel like, you know what, I think I have some other creative ideas that I wanna do. You can click on add side 
you can click on blank slide and then you can just start from scratch. So you're not limited to just using a smart slide to a classic slide or importing your slide. You can just start from a blank template and you can do the same thing. You can grab your header and maybe you wanna add title here. With images, you can now add frames. So let's add this image here. And when you click on settings, you could add a different frame. So let's say you wanna make this a Polaroid. Uh, if you wanna have this as a display, you can. You're not limited to the smart, techno the smart side that uses a display. If you wanna have multiple phones, you can with this one. This has come up in the past, I'd love they you know, users wanted to see multiple phones. So you can do that and then add another image. Let's see, we'll do this one. No frame, phone. And now you can have a second phone on this slide. Perfect. And then if you want, you can add all the other information that pertains to this slide. And then with that, I'll now be passing this along to Ken, who will walk us through the updates for our existing features. Thank you for going over the newest features, Fatima. Um, as you mentioned during this portion, I'll just quickly go over some of the updates we made to a couple of the existing features. Um, to get started, let's head over to comments. And then can you click that option? Perfect. So using comments is an effective way to collaborate with your team, communicate ideas, changes and suggestions to the slide in real time. In order to make this feature even better, we've added a tagging option. To tag a user, select add comment and simply input the at key in the message text box. This pop-up menu will appear and it will display any collaborators that already have access to the deck. If you're in a team, it will also list that you're, um, it'll also list the members that are part of your organization. Um, at the bottom center, if you want to add anybody, you could click Add Collaborator and send them an invitation. Perfect. So once your member has been tagged, you can add your message. We can say something like, hey, Ken, can you fix this slide or add an image? Perfect. And then we'll just click Post. Perfect. And now that this is saved, this member will receive a notification and other members will be aware that this comment is meant for that user specifically. And then in addition to the tagging feature, we've also added the ability to assign ownership of slides. To grant ownership, you would just click on the owner icon that's under comments. And then from there, you would select either one of your collaborators, a teammate, or send an invitation as well. Now, once you grant ownership of the slide, it doesn't mean that only the owner may edit it. However, it does signal to other team members that this is the main point of contact for that slide. So essentially, you will wanna reach out to them before making any changes. And then those are the updates that we made to comments. So I would like to move over to our help center. To find the help center, you'll wanna click on the question mark icon at the bottom right if you're in the editor view. If you're in the library, it will be at the top right instead. But once you select that option, you'll see the first um, tab is get help. Here is where you'll enter your question. So if you, if Fatima entered import PowerPoint here, we'll see a bunch of options come up that are relevant to your question. To your question. So here, if you select on any of those articles, let's open that one, perfect. Now you'll see instructions and steps on how to complete the process. Um, the visual examples, they are GIFs, so you'll have, um, you know, a live visual and it can help you, you know, figure it out. Um, if there's anything that you, you know, if you have a question that you still don't have an answer for, you can always click on contact us at the bottom center and that'll take you to our live chat support where you can speak with a rep. And then click on the help section again, please. Perfect. Now under get help, you're going to find the tutorial section. Here, um, depending on the slide or future that you're looking at, you'll see different videos come up. Um, in this section, we're gonna be adding um, more examples and videos regularly. So, you know, be, sh be sure to click on that option just to find, um, you know, the different videos. And then lastly, 
Um, we also added the give feedback section. Before in the past, it used to say report issue. Um, so this would be the section that you could still, you know, post a, um, some kind of issue you're running to, any kind of problems, and we'll be able to email you back. Or you can always, you know, post um, your request. So any features you want, any templates, anything like that, um, we'll also receive those there. And then the last cool thing that we added to our help section is just the keyboard shortcuts. Um, sometimes it's hard to figure out that these controls are there, so we wanted to expose them better so that you, all of our users are aware that they can use these quick shortcuts. So now you can search up undo, copy, things like that. And depending on the device you're using, whether you're on a PC or a Mac, it'll show the you know, controls that are relevant to your device. Okay, perfect. And this concludes our, you know, our news updates on the latest features. So we'll be moving over to the live QA. Awesome. So I'm going to go through the questions that we received uh, during registration. And then if any questions come up, uh, again, you guys can use either the chat feature or the QA Q and A feature. Let me just open that here. Perfect. Uh, so the first question we got was, the, what's the best way to add content when slide template is maxed out? So this is if you've reached your limit of your slide, I think first, do I really even need to add more information? Um, so some people will say, oh, no, I need 13 bullets. But at that point, your slide has now become a document and 13 bullets for your audience may be too much. So think to yourself when you are hitting the guardrails that come within the product, do I really need to add more of this information? Should I really add that second image or that third image? If you feel like yes, because again, this is your slide and it's your vision. Um, if you feel like, no, I, I really do need to add more of this information, that's where converting the classic comes in. So you'll use the smart slides until you hit the max, convert to classic, and then from there, you can add a bunch of the elements that we mentioned earlier. So you can add another bullet, you can copy and paste some of the information and then um, paste it in. And so it'll like be all aligned the way you'd want it. If it was one shape and you wanted to add another shape, again, you just copy and paste it so that you have the exact same size for consistency. Um, another question that came in is, how do I get everyone on my team to think the same about beautiful, not to take away their creativity or independent thinking, rather to form a similar context in their mind that everyone can work together? This is a good one. Uh, simply put, I would say use the tool. As you use the tool, beautiful AI is subtly teaching you the rules of design with our guardrails. And per the, the earlier question, when you are hitting these guardrails, um, you want to think to yourself, why should I continue with this decision? Um, what are the guardrails that my users are hitting? And then it should slowly be teaching you, oh, I've hit another thing telling me uh, you can't add any more text. It means that I'm be maybe being too wordy and I need to learn to be more concise with my answer or explain this in like less than five sentences. And as you use the tool, um, this stuff subtly comes up. It's actually a real life example. Um, the beautiful AI team is actually having a hard time creating decks when we're using classic slides because we're so used to just the smart slides. Um, and you know, even when we're making things, I'm just like, wait, why, why, why would I move this like you know this text box all the way to the left or all the way to the right? It should be centered. And we're power users, so I know it's just slightly different. Uh, but as you use the tool, you and your team should uh, subtly pick up on the different design rules um, without having to be a designer. Another question that's just come up, uh, what are some features people, few people know about? Let me go into the deck really quick. So one of the biggest features I would say is analytics. So let's say we've created this deck and I want to share it with my team. I'm going to click on copy link. And I'm going to paste it here. And this is the deck that we've just created. Um, perfect, it's loading. So I can go ahead and click through these. 
And let's say we're going to stop at slide seven. Perfect. I've stopped at slide seven. Now I'm going to go back into beautiful. This is the deck that you've sent out. Maybe this is a deck you've sent out to your investor or your team. And you want to know, well, did they look at the deck? So you'll go ahead and you'll click on actions here and you'll click view analytics. And this will take you to the analytics section for this presentation only. So it looks like this, a link to this presentation was shared twice so far. That's this number here. And now I could see like a timeline history, how many unique views. It looks like it's the same person, me, uh, who's viewing this, uh, the average time being spent. So I could see, okay, looks like there was two views. How many seconds did this person take? So if I click on this last link, it'll open another chart. So I can say, okay, this person spent three seconds on the first slide, two seconds on the second, one on the fifth, and then they didn't look at the rest. This to me then should be like, oh no, so this was an investor deck. They didn't even get to my main pitch. Maybe I should move slide 11, which had the main pitch, or maybe that had my budget listed there to slide two, because it seems like there seems to be a drop off after slide seven. Or I think to myself, what was slide seven? What potentially was the drop off for the users to not pay any attention to it or skip it? So this is a really good tool to use uh, just to sort of leverage and understand how your audience is responding to your slides. The next thing I would say is customizing your animation. So I'm gonna go back and when you click on animation, if you click on custom timeline here, you'll be able to just customize the animation. So you can set items as a wait for click or you can set them as a delay. Let's say you want every two bullets to appear. You can set it that way. So this is definitely an underutilized feature. You can also then set like, do you want it simultaneously, sequential? Here in the same section, this is where you're gonna be able to record your audio and import your tracks. So if I click play automatically here, you get a better view this way. Record your audio, you'll be able to record it directly in the tool. Or if you've create, recorded your audio, maybe using your phone or some other device, you can import that track here. And then finally, I would say another big one is skipping slides. So again, if you click on more and you're like, I really don't want this agenda to be live or this is an old deck, this slide is no longer necessary, you can click on skip slide. And once you skip the slide, it'll automatically, when you're presenting, this slide will automatically be skipped. And to note, let's say you are using the analytics feature skip slides do appear in the analytics. So if it says slide two, no one's viewed it, don't panic. Just think to yourself, it's likely potentially that, that it could have been a skipped slide. Um, one of the other questions receives, why should we use this app and not a traditional PowerPoint? Uh, this is a fantastic question. Um, Ken likes to say, modern problems require modern solutions. And with us for Beautiful AI, by incorporating the rules and practices of design, like one font across all of your slides, limiting your text space, the adaptability, the fact that I can click on layout and move and I've added this bottom text and maybe something on the left and maybe I want my image bigger, the slide is automatically adapting for you. So it's not you tinkering and manually moving these options. You might even accidentally skip some text. Um, and so we built this product that made it dramatically quicker and easier for you to and you and non designers to just create really good, beautiful and compelling sides. It looks like we also have some questions in the chat. Although I think Ken, did you already handle that? Um, yeah, I was able to reach out. Perfect. Awesome. So I think at this point, um, if there are no more questions, after the event, you all will be receiving a survey with the link to this presentation. So if you wanna share it with your team or if you wanna review some of the questions that we went through later, you definitely can. Uh, if you wanna reach out to Ken or I, you can email us at support at beautiful.ai. 
We look through every single support ticket that comes in. You could also chat with us live um, at any point just by clicking the little get help button and then contact us. And then um, a, que a question came in for Brooke about how to add a logo to each page. Um, we can actually expose this in oh. the footer section and then you would just click on colors from the left tab, select edit theme at the bottom. Perfect. And then in the footer section from the left panel, you'll see that you'll be able to insert a logo on a light colored background and on a dark colored background. Um, and then for all your most templates, it'll be exposed in the footer area. Um, and then in the title template, we actually um, allow you to expose it in the header area instead. So that would be the only difference there. But um, that would be the best way to insert your logo. Cool. Thanks for catching that, Ken. Well, with that, um, I thank everyone so much for joining us again. Yeah, thank you, everyone. All right. Bye, everyone.